Welcome back guys, this is day 5 of our uh, in-home workout series. Uh, today we're going to have 3 segments, the first one is our daily core protocol, uh, protocol series. First one, Superman holds, we have 3 rounds of 30 seconds. From there we have a spinal articulation movement, 3 rounds of 6 reps. And the last one we have bird dogs, 3 rounds of 6 on each side. From there, today we have a strength segment. It's going to be four times through of a little superset, meaning that it's going to follow movement one immediately into movement two. Movement one will be a suitcase deadlift. It's going to be 12 reps on each side, followed by a plank kettlebell drags, eight reps on each side. Once we finish four rounds of this, we're going to move to the workout of the day. We have quarantine wad number five. We're going to be performing 30 devil presses, followed by 10 hand release push-ups, 20 alternating dumbbell snatches, 10 hand release push-ups, 10 dumbbell cleans, right side only, 10 hand release push-ups, and 10 dumbbell cleans, left side only, and 10 hand release push-ups. Alright guys, the first movement for today, we have uh, Superman holds. So on your yoga mat, you're going to go ahead and lay down facing down. From this position, you're going to be aware of engaging everything in the posterior chain. First, do the shoulder blades together. So engage that and go ahead and get your arms off the ground and get your feet off the ground. Keep your glutes nice and tight. You're going to be holding this position for 30 seconds. If you can go over 30 seconds, it's too easy. Go up to 45 seconds, no problem. Progress as you please. Just be aware of how you're breathing and at the end of the day, breathe, brace your core and do not relax your glutes. Keep your glutes squeezed in the whole time. This next movement, guys, we have the Jefferson Crow. It's a little more technical movement. This movement is a spinal articulation movement. It's not really hinging at the hips at all. So we're gonna go ahead and use any platform that you have at home that you can stand on top of. It can even be the sidewalk of your street, anything that you have. Uh, you're gonna stand on top of the platform, you're gonna hold a set of weights, you go lie on this, don't worry about me at all. And the main goal for this is to crawl each little segment of your spine one at a time. We're really conscious about it. Go slow and breathe properly. Before you do anything, the main thing is your hip here is not going to move at all. You're not going to be hinging your hip like a deadlift. Your hips are going to stay here and your knees must stay straight. We're trying to stretch everything across your body here and your hamstring is a cross over your knee joint. So it's very important to keep this straight. So you're going to start at your cervical spine and your neck and you're going to curl one little section. Once you get this to the to the, 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 to the T-spine, curl that over every, every little section and go over that as low as you can. Do not lash your knees back. Once you go up, you're going to go ahead and breathe in and you're going to unfold your body one segment at a time. Nice and slow. And keep the weight close to your body the entire time. And one more time again, and start in a cervical spine, one segment at a time, through the thoracic spine, through your lumbar spine, through your hip joint. And keep going all the way, as low as you can, without letting this flow, and come back to one slow segment at a time. Amazing. For the next movement, we're going to be doing bird dogs. So back to your yoga mats there. Uh, you're going to be in a table position. What I want from this table position is your hands directly below your shoulders, your knees directly below your hips. So bring your knees in a little more here. Yeah. So from there, guys, be aware of your core. Never let this section back round off. So you want to keep everything steady through this. From there, you're going to breathe in, you're going to keep your core nice and raised. You're going to lift the opposite sides of your body. So you're going to bring one arm to your ear, the other leg straight. Do not let go of your core engagement. Do not let this curvature happen. So on you right here, I want you to push your belly in a little more. There you go. Keep this engagement. Do not let your hip rotate. You're going to be out in the sides for two rounds of six reps each side. The main thing is going to happen here, your hip if it's not, is going to try to move. You do not want to let that go. Hold it there again and breathe in and try. Keep your hip nice and engaged. Worth it? Alright, on the strength portion of today's workout, we have a little superset, meaning you're going to be moving from one exercise to the next. 
uh, and that completes one round. We will be doing this four times through. The first movement is a suitcase deadlift. Uh, this will be a movement primarily targeting your posterior chain, your hamstrings. What that means is, is a hip hinging movement. The next thing is you only have one weight offsetting your body. So that weight is going to be trying to unstabilize your body. Your goal is to keep everything tight, keep everything lined up perfectly. So you're going to go ahead and pick up your weight, either the dumbbell or the kettlebell, make sure everything is straight, go ahead and bring the weight up. From there, everything is nice and tight through this plane of motion. Movement starts at the hip. So once the hip bends, you're going to go ahead and hinge that as far as you go. Once you can't go far anymore, then you allow it to bend the knees and the belly button. So nice and tight through your core, hip hinge, and you follow through. Knees only bend once your hips hit a full extended position. Next thing is, do not let go of your shoulder blades. Keep disengaged the entire time. Shoulder blades squeeze together. Main emphasis on your hip hinge. Once you complete your suitcase that so you're going to go ahead and assume a plank position, a tall plank position on your hands. So from a tall plank position, hands right below your shoulders. You're going to have your weight, whatever weight you have, right behind the hand. From this position here, you're going to go ahead and reach across to the opposite hand, and you're going to drag the kettlebell across your body to the other side. Go ahead and reach and drag that. Place your hands back, sweet slides, drag that to the side. The goal for here is to keep your glutes tight and do not let your hips swing. Keep everything nice and tight and stable. Uh, an easier way of having a hard time stabilizing this is keep your feet a little bit wider apart. If you can keep them narrow, great. If not, just go a little bit wider. So for the quarantine wad number five, the first movement is a devil press. For a devil press, we need two dumbbells. Go ahead and hold this. With your two dumbbells, guys, you're going to be performing a burpee to a swing, assuming an overhead position. So you're going to go ahead and place the dumbbells on the ground, and you're going to go sprawl your legs back and chest to the floor, and go ahead and step back up. From this position here, grab your kettlebells back, and you're going to swing that overhead. And again. Burpee. Once you step back in the burpee, guys, step with your feet outside of the dumbbells. Keep your back flat. Don't let your back round. So work on the hip hinge from there. Pick it up the way. Go ahead, hand it. Swing that under you. And overhead. So you want to bring shoulder blades together close to you. So you almost bring the dumbbells to your forehead here. And you're pushing that overhead. And a burpee. Chest all the way down. Ground. When you go up, your feet go outside of the dumbbells. Make sure the dumbbells are close to your midline, meaning directly underneath your body. And you're going to go ahead and swing that from a straight back position to overhead. Make sure your shoulder blades are scooped back the entire time. Burpee, step, and swing. Bring that to your forehead and you'll reach a safe overhead position. Again. Back straight, shoulder blades together before you reach your overhead position. Back straight, shoulder blades, and over. Amazing. Next movement, we have a hand release push up. So, as a regular push up, go ahead. If you have a hard time doing this on your toes, just perform that on your knees. If you're going to do a knee push up, make sure that your hips fully extended. Shoulder blades together, you're going to go ahead and slow your body all the way down to the floor. You're going to remove your hands off the ground and you're going to push yourself back up to your initial position. And again. And push. So every time at the bottom of the movement, you're going to release your hands from the ground. Main thing, glutes squeeze the entire time, core tight. Do not let your lower back collapse. Keep that engaged. Alright guys, the next movement we have a dumbbell snatch. It's going to be alternating sides. So we have 20 reps total, you're going to be performing 10 reps on each side. Make it for the dumbbell snatch. I want the weight to be directly below your hip. The weight supported in front of you, you're going to have to be recruiting your lower back to do an amount of stress that's not necessary. So weight's right under you. You're going to go ahead and start moving by hinging your hip back. 
You're gonna keep your lower back straight, you're gonna pick up the weight in the bottom, and you're gonna push against the floor as you create momentum to drive the weight all the way overhead. And pull. Once you get overhead, I want your shoulders close to your ear. I want everything straight through this line here. Nice connected to your core. And again here. Every time you descend, guys, hinge your hips back. Switch sides, out to hang. Backs flat the entire time. Before you reach up, so the blades go back in the socket, you pull your elbows behind your body to safely reach overhead. Everything is from the floor, through your core, through your extremity. So, ground through extremity, ground, extremity. So, ground, you push, you create pressure through your legs, the, the power, the strength goes through your core into the extremity point of the weight. Make sure everything is lined up on that. And breathe properly. Next movement, guys, we have 10 dumbbell cleans. We're going to be performing the dumbbells cleans one side at a time uh, from the mid of your body. You're gonna go ahead and pick up the weight here. Whole thing for today is hinging at the hip, keeping your, your lower back flat, chest nice and open the whole time. Now you're gonna swing the weight up as you shrug and you pull the weight to your shoulders. Detail for all these movements, triple extension. So when we're about to drive the floor away, when you feel the momentum going, you're gonna go ahead and go on your toes. You're gonna extend your ankles, your knees, and your hips all extend at the same time. Ankles, knees, and hips. So this movement to propel the weight to yourself. Once you feel the weight coming towards your shoulders, you're gonna go ahead and catch that back into your power position there, into your little hinge of the hip. Once you do 10 on each side, you're gonna perform another 10 hip release push ups, and you're gonna do 10 reps on the other side. All right, guys, I hope you like this workout. This concludes uh, our first week of full lockdown and in-home workouts. We just got the news that we're gonna be in full lockdown here in LA starting today, which means a lot more in-home workouts coming your way. I hope you guys enjoy it. We've both been doing this daily. My body's feeling it, and I'm looking <laughs> forward to getting fit during these strange times of quarantine. Thanks.